Hi everyone, it's currently 6.30 on the 16th of March and the sky is actually set to clear tonight for uh, a little while. Uh, I've already got a target picked out which is going to be M63, the Sunflower Galaxy and this is actually one of my personal favourite targets of all time. Uh, I absolutely love to image it every time uh, I give it a try. Um, there's so much beautiful dust lane detail and such to be picked out in it that um, it just never ceases to uh, amaze really um, before I get on with the rest of the video anyway I'd just like to take a moment to really quickly say a huge thank you to everybody who's been watching uh, all the content that I've been creating um, the fact that you're willing to spend your time watching these things uh, is just really humbling to me and it really does mean a lot and the community on the whole has been extremely supportive uh, so much so that it's just it's just blown me away really I'm uh, really pleased to be a part of it there's one other thing as well I'd like to add. I'd like to personally say thank you to Chris over at DIY Astro, who's uh, very kindly added me as one of his featured channels, which is just a little thing at the bottom uh, of his channel that shows a few other content creators who he's chosen to add there. Uh, and I'm very honoured to be one of those now, so uh, thank you very much indeed for that, mate. It means a lot. So following on from a comment left for me on my last video where I was catching M81, M82 and M57, um, Dave's astrophotography commented that would I not be better suited basically um, having a larger weight higher up the counterweight bar than all these small ones right at the end uh, just due to the moment of inertia effect um, that it can have on guiding. And He's absolutely right and that is something I used to do when I was using a longer focal length telescope uh, and I switched away from it since I moved to this which is actually uh, a little bit heavier than my previous one which was an Edge HD 8 um, mainly because the whole rig were getting kind of really heavy to carry out all as one like I like to do but um, I did fish out my large counterweight today and I just thought well there's only four kilograms difference this little cluster here is six kilo and the large one on its own is 10. So I thought, why not? It's only four kilograms, uh, and I'm actually gonna switch to that right now and uh, see if it has any effect. So cheers for commenting, Dave. I'm uh, actually using a pair of small rifle scope clamps uh, as they also have a 25mm internal clamping diameter and that happens to be the size of my counterweight shaft which is a, an aftermarket model from G-Optic uh, and that just works great to make sure that even if it gets really cold and let's go let's say that the, the clamping mechanism here actually doesn't need to be on it's just one extra method of safety uh, to stop any slippage Well, we're on 7.30 p.m. now, and it's actually cleared up quite nicely. Um, I didn't think it was gonna, given this past 25 minutes or so, uh, there were a lot of clouds passing through uh, the Orion region of sky, which is south. Um, but yeah, it looks quite promising now. There's a bit of haze about, but I'm hopeful that that'll clear, given that it's just been uh, slowly dissipating over time. And uh, yeah, I'm about ready to get started. I have made the same mistake that I often do though, in that I've left it too late to get my laptop started. So uh, even though I'll sign in now, it'll still take another 10 minutes before I can use it probably. <laughs> Uh, 
Well, we're on half past eight now, uh, which is actually just about the start of astronomical darkness uh, for this time of the year. The sky uh, is unfortunately looking a little bit soupy, really. It's not, I mean, you can see stars, but it's not actually truly clear. So uh, I'm hoping that it'll improve a little bit from that. I'm currently taking a time lapse uh, into the same region of sky as I'm actually imaging, uh, which will hopefully show you what I'm talking about there. But um, usually they're kind of just <laughs> upsetting to watch because you realize just how much cloud there is passing by, uh, as it's much more sensitive than just your eyes. It's currently about quarter to ten now. Uh, the target's rising nicely into some uh, little bit of clearer sky uh, as it's looking through a little bit less atmosphere at this sort of elevation. I've currently got about 21, 22 decent exposures. I'll have to double check through them again um, for any that need deleting. But yeah, at least I, I've got some data uh, and enough to be able to present something to you at the end. Uh, I'm hoping it stays clear and I can get at least double that though because uh, I'm under no illusion that this target is uh, going to need quite a bit of exposure to bring out its best. Um, certainly more than one night could give me at this time in the year, but um, yeah, hopefully it's, it's still going to be a reasonable image. Well, it's around about half past 12 now, uh, so I thought it was time for another little update. There is still some persisting uh, very thin cloud quite high up. Uh, it's not really visible visually, but it is still there on those time lapses. Um, thus far, I'm at about 60 exposures at three minutes each, so roughly three hours of data. Um, I'm hoping to add some more before I uh, end the night, but I'll just take whatever I can get now, at least I know I've got enough to stack and it'll be a worthwhile image hopefully. Well. Uh, I can hardly believe we're at this point in the night, but it's 1.30am now uh, and actually in 10 more minutes I'll have to perform a meridian flip. I really didn't think I'd reach this point, uh, I expected it had clouded out long before now, but actually the conditions of the night have gradually gotten better I'd say, looking back through uh, the data that I've been taking. It certainly seems to be of a higher quality right now than it was earlier in the night, there's less haze around and uh, yeah, just the subs look generally better. Um, I've currently got about 80, 82, uh, I do believe of them. Um, I'm not sure how many of those I'll be able to keep. I know I'll have to call some of them, but you know, you, you never really do get a 100% keep rate on nights like tonight. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm really hopeful now, looking uh, towards processing these images that uh, Pixin Sight, which is what I'm going to be using to stack and process them, will be able to weight these subframes appropriately and uh, perhaps deliver more weight into these better frames and uh, hopefully it'll be a nice end result. So we're on 25 minutes past two now, uh, and I suspect that that's probably the end of my night's imaging. 
clouds have started to roll in and they don't really look like they're going to clear. I will leave the gear out for a little bit longer just in the chance that it blows away. Um, not my gear but the cloud. Um, but yeah, hopefully with the data I have captured which has been 92 I believe sub exposures at 3 minutes each, uh, almost 5 hours, that should be enough data to really do this target some justice because uh, while not the brightest overall, it's, it's reasonably bright, but it still takes a decent amount of integration time to uh, really make it shine, which I'm hoping to be able to do so and present a nice image for you all at the end. Uh, it really goes without saying, uh, and I do mean this, thank you very, very much indeed for spending your time watching these videos. It genuinely means the world to me and uh, I appreciate every single one of you. So, as always, Clear skies and see you next time.